Welcome back to Chow Time Pod. It's your host, Rick. The videos a day from the wall. I despise you, mother. DNA tests reveal a woman is not father's daughter. Ouch. Please like to rub them below. I really appreciate that. Let's get that chow. Chow time. Boy math is them verbally telling you something that they were going to do for you or get for you and then never get it. But in their mind, they told you. So it's almost like they did it, but then you're still waiting for it and it's never gotten done. And you're just like, what the? Someone's a side piece. Welcome to the wall. In today's video, we will see the story of a woman who discovers how she was deceived for 32 years by her mother, who hid the secret that she was not the daughter of the man she thought was her father. How did this woman find out about her mother's painful deceit? We want to invite you to smash that like button. Let's support the movement. Subscribe to the channel. That's the only contribution we ask of you, man. Add your grain of sand to the movement. Share your experience in the comments for any man who needs it. And without further introduction, let's get started. This fucking text message right here mm -hmm. changed my life forever. About a year ago now, January 9th, I get a text message telling me to get a DNA test from Ancestry. And I think it's fake. Wait, it, the message just told her just to get a DNA test? I am FaceTime my friend and I'm like, listen to this. And she's like, I swear, my gut's telling me this is real. You need to respond. So I respond. And then they write me back. I was shook that they responded and I let them know that I'd already done 23 and Me the year before because it was on sale and I was hoping I was gonna find that I was like secretly exotic or related to royalty. But I'm just English and Irish like I thought I was. They even made- This person cares. They care enough. You know, they, they don't want to they're probably related to the mother in some way relationship wise this is why they don't want to <laughs> spill the beans who it is but i'm almost positive it's someone that's related to her I made a burner account on facebook to message me and my husband saying i need to get a dna test from ancestry they would not provide me with any sort of proof that this was real um and obviously i called my mom immediately saying uh -oh. what the fuck so a little backstory, my parents divorced when I was nine. Um, I was very close with my mom and she always told me the story that like, she was an alcoholic and my dad cheated. My dad was a cheater. So when I called her and she says, I know exactly what, I'm talk what you're talking about. I had an affair. I almost fell off my fucking chair. She had an affair with a guy 10 years younger than her when she was in college. Like, a, they went away for like a weekend or something, and it was a one-time thing, but he even saw her on campus and said, is that mine? And she denied it. This bitch either gaslit herself. I'm happy that this daughter is realizing that your mother is a bitch. I'm, 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 I'm proud of you, girl. Have at it. Or thought she was going to take this shit to her grave. Imagine. So I, I, I order an ancestry test immediately. Um, it takes about six weeks to get my results back and ding, ding, your results are in. I find <clears> out that yes, this man is my father, the stranger. So I message him immediately and mm -mm, he lives in California. Okay. He's British. What the fuck? <laughs> he said my mom sent him a Christmas card when I was two years old saying my name in it and that he's Googled my name ever since and in 2007, my name popped up and he saw a picture of me and he knew immediately that I was his daughter. Look at that. Look at the maniacalness of this evil woman. I'm not talking about her. I'm talking about the mother, you know, is toying with this British man. This British man has somewhat of an idea that that's his child, but she's toying with him took the child away from him two years later sent the postcard with just the name on it just to fuck with the man's fucking mentality or mental health and the man was obsessed over it this is where i hate the fucking notion of deadbeat fathers the man truly cared about his daughter he wanted life with her with his daughter but the mother denied it the denied it to such a degree that the man wasn't even sure if he even had a damn daughter. Fucking crazy. So he emails my mom <clears throat> wanting to get in contact with me 
and she denies it and kind of threatens him and says, See? do not, please do leave us Who's alone, do not ever contact me again. And she's mentally unwell and something bad would happen. She would, she might harm herself if she ever finds out. So what did he do? He followed me on social media my entire life. He watched me date my boy. Now, I feel for this gentleman. See, you guys always want to say to me that I never had kids, so I would never fucking know. Well, what is that? I, I feel for this man. I can understand the feeling if I had a child that I yearned for a connection with, but I knew someone, you know, the mother told me she's mentally unstable, so I'm just going to be in the background because she's my child. This poor gentleman put himself through hell, I'm sure trying to stay in this girl's life, just trying to be somewhat present, but unpresent at the same time. Fathers need a lot more credit. We really do. Boyfriend, get married, have babies, everything, all from the outside, not able to know me. I'm telling you, this picture freaked me the fuck out. I have so much more. Let me know if you want a part two. As I always say, wow. responsibility is kryptonite for women. A partying woman is not wife material. Almost always, when we see a woman who has pinned a child on a man, it's because that woman was into some kind of vice or led a wild life in her youth. Yes. But instead of taking responsibility for their actions, they prefer to sweep it under the rug and continue their life as if nothing happened. But the devil has two sheets, one to deceive and another to cover up. But here mm. in this story, as we see, we have three people who were victims of a woman's irresponsibility. The biological father who couldn't be a father to his daughter had to watch from the shadows as she grew up. Yeah. Can you imagine how painful that is? Like I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, that would fuck with my mental health for sure. This woman lost the opportunity to share with her real father and have quality moments with him in her childhood. And the father or stepfather who finds out after 32 years that the one he thought was his princess is not his daughter. Damn. This is the most devastated victim in this whole equation. It would have been so easy for that woman to take responsibility. And the biological... It seemed like the, yeah, the biological father wanted to take care of the child. He was like, is that mine? He even said it when you were pregnant. So what was wrong with this gentleman that you didn't want to be with him? He seemed like a good gentleman. And then why did you pin this on another gentleman? Was he just the simpy provider? What? Father did not want to disappear from the equation, as some feminists might say. Right. It was the mother who didn't want him to take responsibility so as not to ruin her marriage and to avoid being seen as the unfaithful woman who got pregnant from a one-night stand. But let's see the second part. So 2007, right? He, he contacts my mom and she tells him to leave us alone and never contact us again. The following year, I moved to California. That's where I went to beauty school. He was actually living in Southern California at the same exact time. And he was able to see where I worked and where I went to school because again, he followed me on social. It feels a little stalkery. I'm sure you guys, some of you guys are like, man, he's kind of, but it's his daughter. I would want to know almost everything about my child. If, especially when I've never gotten the chance to even meet my child. I am, I'm 100% on this man's side. I would do the same thing. Social media, which like I could throw out that like, to think of what, what he saw, like, was it Facebook? Was it MySpace? Like, I hope to fucking God, it was not my Tumblr. Like he drove past my work once. He even called, I guess, to hear my voice. He asked what time we closed or something. He was even going to come in for a haircut, but his wife talked him out of it. He was, she was convinced that I would recognize him, but I swear I wouldn't have because never did I ever in a million years suspect this. I have two older sisters from my mom's first marriage who would say that my dad loved me more than them because I was his biological daughter. Ouch. So growing up, it wasn't really weird that I didn't look much like anybody because my 
two sisters are from my mom's first marriage. And if anybody ever con commented on like my eyebrows or like my nose, my mom would say it was all from her. Or she would bank on the fact that the man who raised me, his whole family was dead. So she said I must look like somebody on his side. Mm. What else can I tell how evil can this person get? She already thought of the excuse. Oh, his family's already dead. Uh, yeah, somebody in his family. Tell you, oh, that I have two little sisters. I say little, like they're, one of them's two years older than my son. He, if he was gonna have a boy, he was gonna name his son my son's name. And for both of his daughters, names he had my daughter's name on both of their lists and both of his daughter's names were on my list for a baby girl Ooh, that's weird. he's a marine biologist and before i decided to go to beauty school i toured a school for marine biology so from 2007 on he did nothing but watch me through social media go throughout my life nothing happened until january this year when i got that message on facebook Maybe you're wondering who sent this text oh, message. Maybe it was the, the wife. It could have been the wife. But I'm almost positive it's someone from the mom's side of the family. Well, that's a whole nother story. Because it was actually, I think, his brother's son, who has a similar story to me. Like, <sighs> found out later in life that that man was his biological father and didn't want me to... How does this one family get fucked over so much? The bro both brothers went through the same thing? What the fuck? Well, one went through that it's not his child, and the other one went through that he knows it's his child, but he hasn't he can't contact her whatsoever. Who's worse? I can't even uh, you know what? The man that thought that it was his son that ended up not being his son, I think is a lot worse actually. Because you thought you had your bloodline set. You thought you had your kids set, but technically you have nothing. Ever. He didn't want me to go through that. I mean, too late, but I guess he just wanted me to know the truth. So unfortunately, this did sever my family and it did destroy the relationship between me and my mom. It could. Um, it, there's a lot more that goes into this, but just I, you can imagine that a secret of this magnitude requires a lot of lying and betrayal and manipulation. To how, how old are you, girl? Yeah, how long has this been going on, too? It's not just the lying betrayal and all that, just the sheer time frame that it's been going on for, too. Keep it up for this long. Cutting my mom off is one of the hardest things I've ever done. Never sure, would I have ever expected it. We were like this growing up. I used to tell people she was my soulmate. And yes, I actually did meet him. I got back two weeks ago from California, so I'll do a separate video on that if you want. The mother is the embodiment of the favorite word in all divorce stories, a narcissist. Mm. This woman had the perfect cocktail to build her entire lie. She had two daughters from a previous marriage, so the new child wouldn't look like the older sisters. She finds a beta provider, who has no siblings or living relatives, the best possible candidate to pin another man's sin on. It just sounds so evil. It literally sounds like fucking grand... Fucking Dr. Evil, one million dollars type of shit. Or the son of Chad. Because when you are alone, you only think about the happiness of having children. Two, you have no family. So of course, you will get attached to having a child and starting your family. And that's why I say the mother is a narcissist. It's fine that she cuts ties with her mother because it's not like she repented and wanted to talk to her daughter. She was going to die with this information. There was no attempt to confess. She just wanted to take the secret to her grave. And let me tell you something, genes don't lie. The girl had hobbies and interests similar to those of her biological father. This is why I always say it. Genes, it matters. Who your parents are, what you do as your parents, it matters. Little things get instilled to your child. Like my mom, like my mom used to say it all the time. You're like, the spitting image of your dad. Not like looks wise, but my personality. My personality is just like my dad. I'm just as harsh as he is about things. I, I look at things very similar to him. I'm very business oriented. I'm very money oriented. I'm very family oriented. Why? Because I was raised by the man. <laughs> but put yourself in the biological father's place. And his genes. 
He followed her on social media, knew where she was, how she was growing up. Everyone will see it in their own way. But paternal instinct cannot be turned off overnight. Yeah. This man wanted to be a father. He wanted to be in his daughter's life. That's why he tried to contact the mother, but she kept rejecting him. He is probably a man of values who I did agree. not show up to talk to the stepfather to avoid causing harm. Because another man, I would say myself too, would have shown up to claim my child. I'm with the wall. I probably would have not stalked her. Like, throw out and was just like, you know what? This is my daughter. Fuck you. <laughs> Want to know what you would have done? I'll read your comments. Let's see part three. Let me begin by apologizing for my stupid use of the word exotic in my last video. I did not mean it in a bad way, but um, people in my comments kind of educated me, and I will not be using it like that again. Also, my mom was not 18 dating an eight-year-old in college. She went back to school for teaching. She was 35. He was 25. Still a crazy gap, but it was like a one-time thing, a drunk, but whatever. Yep. So we were talking by email for a couple months, and he was like, do you want to meet? And initially, he had recommended that we like meet up with our families, but I was like, I think we should meet like you and me first. Mm. Coming from a broke, I can see why he said the whole family thing just it makes her feel safer with everybody else around her. And how I would have thought if I was the father. In family, there's like this whole inside of me, I guess, like was hoping that he was going to fix me. And I really tried to go into it with like an open mind and low expectations, but I am me. So I imagined how I would greet like my long lost child of like, you are so beautiful. Let me look at your face. And he was not like that. <laughs> I felt, Remember, he's seen you throughout all of your life. Sort of insecure, and there was not a lot of eye contact. I felt like he was not interested in what I had. I think it was more he feels a little bit of ashamed that he couldn't do this earlier. At least I would. I had to say, I felt like... I felt like I was stupid. I felt like he didn't like me. I'm sure he'd be horrified if I heard that, but... That's just the truth. I mean, I'm a very warm, talkative, funny, goofy person, and he is not like that. So it could just be who he is. He could even be just trying to respect me as an adult. But um, our interactions left me feeling very confused and very invalidated. I was there for like five days. We met up like once or twice a day to like hang out, go out to eat or something. And every time I felt like I was prying information out of him and yeah this is just us men in general we just don't like sharing shit so even especially when it's come things like this you're gonna have to ask us and even when you ask us eh. i just felt like he didn't like me i was a-okay until the last day and then i got very emotional because i guess i was just hoping by the last day it would be different and when it wasn't it was just hard and we even went to his house for dinner that night and I'm walking around his house and it's like the pictures of him on the wall. It's like looking at pictures of me. He looks exactly like me. It was so weird. Also, watching him interact with his other daughters was painful. Like, of course, I'm not stupid. He's going to act completely different around them than with me. But I guess after a week of feeling like invalidated and like he didn't like me and then watching him around his daughters, it was so hard. I went in the bathroom and cried. So here I am, back in New York, and... I feel for this girl. Like, she didn't choose this. She seems like a very, you know, pleasant woman. You know, very feminine. Had her life got turned upside down. Um, yeah. I hope that our relationship continues to get better, but... What can I say about this? I really don't think it's an easy process, especially connecting with an adult child. But I want you to notice something. Her mother wasn't a foolish teenager who made a one-night mistake. Mm -hmm. She was a woman in her 30s who was back in school. And it seems that one night she went to a college party and met this 25-year-old man. You know, collagen. She wanted to do something physical. If you understand what I mean, I can assure you she was married. And yet she still did it because that's how they are. Mm. That's why I don't believe in forgiving infidelity, because she does it consciously. 
That's why I say DNA tests should be mandatory. Yep. So that 20 years later, you don't find out that your kids aren't yours and see how you raised another man's seat. This is even harder if it's your only child. And I'll say it again. The real victim here was her stepfather, who probably got involved with a single mother. Now he's paying for her broken lies. But this isn't mentioned by those in the... Isn't this why we... This is why... Again, I before, when I first started doing YouTube and stuff, I, I was a little bit more sympathetic for single mothers. Like, there are good ones. If you find a good one and they provide value in your life, it's wonderful. But now, it's just to this degree of so many women lying and how they can take advantage of you in those positions. Don't deal with single mothers, period. And I'm sorry to say that. I know there's good single mothers out there. I'm sure there's some single mothers that watch me. I'm sorry. I just can't tell. I genuinely can't tell men to date you because there's it's just so much issues and baggage and problems that come with it. The purple hair movement, when they say that 25% of men raise children that aren't theirs. I just want to start by saying cutting my mom off was probably the hardest thing I've ever done. I used to, people used to say like, what's your biggest fear? And like over die, over myself dying, over spiders, over heights. I would say my mom dying 100%. Trying to imagine life without my mom was my biggest fear. So the fact that I have chosen to do this is my, I would have never believed you if you told me that I did this. She, she moved to New York a couple years ago. Um, and it was like the best thing that ever happened to me. I haven't lived near her since I graduated high school. And we were probably like unhealthily close because my parents divorced. I spent most of my time with her and we were like this. She had gotten super sick for a period of time. Like I was her primary caretaker in high school. She had a back surgery that got. This mom sounds horrible. She did all these things to you, and then you ended up having to take care of her as you were growing up, girl. That's a tough life. Staff, and it was just, I was the one that had to take care of her. So we were very, very close. So after she moved here, um, right before COVID started, I noticed how much she was not doing great. She went to rehab in like 1999, I think, and quit drinking, or so she said. I mean, she's a liar, so I don't know if I can believe I'm glad you she know, says. girl. I'm glad you know. But my sisters and I have felt that after she got off alcohol, she turned to other vices. Like, she's a, a, a shopaholic, like crazy. And also, she loves her some Xanax and Ambien. <laughs> So I unfortunately had an ectopic pregnancy over Christmas during COVID. And I was in the hospital for like weeks because of it on and off. Um, and my husband had to stay home with our kids because there was nobody to watch our kids. And my mom living here could have helped us out, but she wasn't able to because she was lying to us the whole time. And she was actually like abusing, heavily abusing drugs. So Christmas Eve, 2020, I found out that I get to go home from the hospital and I don't have to have like a full surgery to remove the fetus from my stomach. Oh, this, this girl's gone through a lot. So I find out I get to spend Christmas with my family. I'm on my way home, driving home from the hospital and I get a call from my mom saying, I'm really sick, I need your help, I have a stomach virus. So of course I go and I go straight to her and I find out by stomach virus, she meant that she took a month's supply of her Xanax and Ambien in like a week and was withdrawing. So I get there and she's like pressuring me to buy drugs off the street and at like bother my, my husband's family and ask them if they can find drugs. She was threatening to kill herself and I ended up calling 911 and they put her in a psych ward. So she's just put my sisters and I through a lot. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. It is. I repeat it again. A partying woman is not wife material. A single mother, especially an unstable one in this case, is not wife material. This was the nuclear bomb of news for this woman. Jeez. But her mother had already been a disaster before, and she had even divorced her stepfather. These kinds of women never have a remedy. I don't blame her for cutting her mother out of her life. But you know what makes me laugh? There are people who think that just because she's the mother, 
It's funny because we don't we don't hear this the the father or the one the 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 father that raised her. We haven't heard too much about that side of the story. I wonder how that man felt after he found out. He deserves a second chance. These are women in the comments saying she made a small mistake, making herself the victim. Fucking whores! Stop defending whore acts. And you you wonder why we call you whores too. When women are defending such ridiculous, blatant disregard for other people and you're defending it, guess what? I'm going to put you in the same fucking boat. Because they are all like this. Not necessarily in what this woman did, but in that they don't like taking responsibility for their actions. This woman doesn't deserve forgiveness. Nope. But those in the purple hair movement say to forgive her. That's why I say responsibility is kryptonite. You know, you, they say this, but when it comes to the father, you would, they would never say to forgive the father. They would never say any of those things for the father. But when it's the mother, oh, she just made a mistake. Shut the fuck up. Right for women. You're all going to come for me when I tell you this. But the honest to God truth is I oh, haven't. This is what I was wondering about. Like spoken to him about it yet <laughs> wow girl he's probably the one that's getting fucked over the most outside of you of course but yeah you jump on me he knows um oh yeah he when knows. this all came about i told my sisters please don't tell him i was waiting to get the results back before i had the conversation but one of my sisters whom i'm estranged with um immediately told him so i don't know what his reaction was I can only imagine he was just as devastated as me. But then there's also the fact like between him and I, not a lot changes. Like that's still my dad. How do you know this girl? You, you don't know, you haven't talked to him. You, you don't know how he feels about it. Maybe he feels that, yeah, you're not his daughter. There are men that do feel that way and they get quite upset. But I do agree if he's a good man, he'll probably still feel that you're his daughter, but I think you're kind of assuming a little much, girl. I'm still his daughter. My kids are still his grandkids. You know, like, he FaceTimes my son every day. My oh. son's named after him. Like, I have his signature on the back of my neck. That's my dad. I will. Okay? Okay. I will. Okay. I'm just taking it at my own pace. I just feel like I have two dads now, which is a good thing. The more that I mean, you don't have a mom now. So it's, it's nice to have two dads, two parents still. The marrier. What? Oh my God! That man may appear strong, but I assure you that inside he is devastated. Just because he doesn't show it in public doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. He's a good Although man. Although we don't know if he knew, some men aren't foolish, and sometimes they know that those children aren't theirs. Yeah. But knowing there is no father in the equation, they prefer to take responsibility. Let me know what you would do in the comments. She would be my daughter. If this exact scenario was happened to me and I found out that my daughter was not my daughter after 20 some odd years of me raising her, taking care of her and doing all these things, guess the fuck what? She's still my damn daughter. Modern women love this, which is why there's a horrible saying that goes, a father is not the one who begets, but the one who raises. Mm. Brothers, a father is the one who plants the seed. Whether you like it or not, raising them, getting involved with a single mother, those children are not yours. A father is the one who plants the seed. There's another saying for a reason. Blood is thicker than water. Do you think she has no interest in her biological father now? Do you think she doesn't want to know if one of her children will have a similar habit to her biological father? The DNA of that man runs through her bloodline. Damn right. So don't be fooled. A father is the one who plants the seed. I feel sorry for that man. He is the victim of an unstable woman. But that's why I say, no matter how much you love your children, a hidden DNA test can solve many problems in the future. True. We've reached the end of the video. But before we go, the questions are for you. What do you think about DNA tests? Shout out to the wall. Shout out to that woman. That was a hard video to watch, even for me. I was getting goosebumps and just having these awkward feelings throughout just her explaining all of that. Women are evil sometimes. Please subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. I'll catch you guys next time. Ciao.